Welcome to Factly, the place of interesting and unusual facts. Top 10 interesting facts about ants that you need to know. Number 10. They can heal wounds. Minor injuries are only seen as a bother because advanced medical care is only a phone call away. But if we're in the midst of the African savanna, without a first aid package, and the closest hospital is hundreds of miles away, even if the closest we can go to aid is still days away, treating that small wound is crucial. Some tribes, notably the Maasai tribe of East Africa, have experienced the same issue and discovered a quick first aid tip while traveling. The Army Ant's Powerful Pincers When a Maasai warrior is wounded while in the African jungle and he needs stitches, he only needs to locate an army ant's nest and select a handful of the largest ants he can find. They then put the head across the wound, bite both sides of it, and they tear the body off, leaving only the head. The seal produced by the temporary surgical staples can easily be broken, yet it can last for days. If required, they replace the heads until the wound is healed. Number 9. Ants were first made by God before the creation of man. As an emerging species, we are all aware that we're relatively new to the rest of creation. A living fossil like the ant has existed since the Cretaceous period. They have been around 110 to 130 million years by now. Compare that to humans who have only been here about 5 million years. The age gap between our two species, along with the -the off-the-chart social evolution of ants, could mean that only a random roll of the celestial dice separated the creation of both. Number 8. They bury their dead. On Earth, only a select few species, including humans, treat their dead with any degree of respect. Surprisingly, it's basically ants, humans, and elephants. Even undertakers in the ant world are employed to perform these special functions. An ant that perishes inside its nest will be carried outdoors for sanitation for the colony's protection in order to prevent the spread of sickness or infection. The dead may also be carried outdoors by any worker ant. However, it appears that there is a particular ant undertaker that generally takes care of the cleanup. They have the ability to duplicate themselves. There is no requirement for fertilization when the parthenogenesis is used for reproduction. They simply create a clone of the mother in the offspring. A colony of Amazonian ants was discovered to produce clones of itself. It's a colony where there are no males, particularly evoking the myth of the ferocious Amazons who do not tolerate being around men. The little fire ant males, whose queens also participate in parthenogenesis, don't want to be outdone either. This ensures that the genetic heritage of the new queens is perpetuated by cloning themselves. The female genome is removed as part of the small male fire ant special maneuver. The ant is an exact replica of the father in some of the fertilized eggs. The little fire ant's unusual reproductive techniques used by both the male and the female, produce offspring ants of the same species. They are all living in a nest with the genetic makeup of three fundamentally different distinct species, including sterile female workers, male clones, and clones of the queen with hybrid genes. Number six, they educate the young. Ants are social insects, and they have an extremely sophisticated system in place within their colonies to ensure they survive. Worker ants are divided into groups to perform different specialized tasks. The jobs include cleaning work, foraging, or taking care of ant eggs in the young. The fact that these worker ants do not naturally possess the essential skills is startling. Their DNA is pre-programmed to do some of those specific tasks. They practice the same activities that humans do in order to develop these skills, and they learn from the experts. This is called the tandem running method and it's used by teacher ants when they run with it and they show a younger ant the ropes. Even more shockingly, this type of instruction incorporates a teacher and student dialogue, the first in a non-human animal and pupil. Additionally, if a student struggles to learn and does poorly on its exams, it will be demoted to some other position that doesn't call for specific training. Number five, they are acquainted with agriculture. There are just four organisms that are now capable of using agriculture as a form of subsistence. Humans, ants, termites, and bark beetles are all forms of life that do so. But between the ants and us, it appears that they began farming first since they have been doing it for 50 million years. Before leaving her birth nest, a young queen must sneak inside the garden and take some fungus pellets away. 
These pellets will serve as the seedlings she needs to establish and maintain her own garden or her young. Similar to how people grow crops, ateen ants raise fungus as part of their farming operations. In order to combat parasites that harm their crops, they even employ insecticides. And although ants are known to use five different agricultural systems, all known ants that use agriculture and fungal gardening have been proven to share some certain common practices. This may indicate that the ants are actually emailing one another back and forth for gardening advice. Number four, they employ disinfectants and herbicides. But theirs is much more environmentally friendly than ours. Additionally, there is a deadly strain of fungus that lives in the ant colony's fungus gardens. They're called mycocultures. The ants have a bacteria at their disposal that they can use to stop the spread of this fungal weed. They store this bacteria on their cuticles as they move around. This antibiotic that this bacteria generates selectively slows the growth of moldy weeds, so they utilize a variety of compounds in their nest to prevent the spread of weeds or parasites. As they construct their nests, wood ants, for instance, add solidified pine glue, which prevents the development of fungus and bacteria. The natural pesticide produced by the lemon ant, which loves to nest in trees, eliminates all other plant life around their homes, and it will even kill large trees. Herbicide is injected into the leaves in order to accomplish this, and soon, plants begin to wither and die. Number three, they breed animals. Ants will rear their versions of livestock, milking insects like aphids, mealybugs, and myrmecophilus caterpillars since they secrete honeydew, which is a pleasant nectar. The ants even herd their livestock from one eating location to the next to help keep predators away, similarly to how we transport animals from one place to another. The ants milk the livestock by tapping them when it's time to take some honeydew along with the aid of their antenna. When the ants move to a new location, they even take their priceless livestock with them. It kind of reminds us of the frontiersmen traveling with their cattle in quest of greener pastures. 2. They fight war. Consider the following scene from the Lord of the Rings' final battle. There's carnage everywhere you turn. Lines of battle muddled as the combatants are confused in the midst of combat. Soldiers clumping together to form a unified front and eliminate foe after foe. Imagine ants instead of Legolas and his crew's attractive, unblemished faces. Terrifying large eyes of doom, fearsome mandibles. The strategies that ants employ in battle are uncannily similar to those used by humans in conflict, and they even change their strategies based on the stakes. They are capable of using propaganda pheromones to deceive rival ants and provoke conflict among one another. Even certain ant species, like the Amazon ant, strangely resemble the legendary Spartans. Specifically, they only exist by fighting battles to increase and replenish their slave populations or diminish other colonies' resources. When in their nests, they even adopt a knightly demeanor and make demands, consuming food provided by their slaves and shining in their chitinous armor. And yes, we did mean slavery when we said it. Because number one is what you've been waiting on. They engage in slavery. Although ants are often thought of as hard workers, there are certain exceptions. Much like with people, there are certain baskets of rotting apples. In order to survive, certain species of ants rely on slave labor, including intentionally engaging in hostilities with other colonies in order to take the pupae and use them as slaves after they hatch. The ant species known as Polyurgus breviceps is the worst apple in the basket, it's also an epidemic in the United States, which happens to be fascinating. This ant species no longer knows how to care for themselves, let alone their offspring. They don't clean their own nests, they don't go scavenging for food, they don't feed the young or the queen. Most species would be doomed to extinction if they exhibited this kind of behavior, but these ants, they have super weapons of mass destruction up their sleeves. When attacking a colony, the warrior ants will spray formic acid on the defenders. This will cause them to panic and weaken their protection, making it easy to defeat them or steal the pupae. They have a more potent weapon in the form of their queen, if that weren't enough. The Polyurgus brevicep queen has the ability to release pheromones that will lessen the aggressiveness of the defending ants, putting them vulnerable to attack. In rare cases, the queen will go with the workers when the ants need more warriors in battle. She will quickly search out the opposing queen after releasing her pheromones to shatter the defender's aggression. Her mission is simple, find the overtaking nest's queen and murder her. The invader queen will take over as the new queen of the invading nest once the act is complete, and her majesty the queen is how the defenders address her as they all kneel before her. But all is not lost for the slaves. 
Occasionally, they stage uprisings against each other. They dismember the larvae of their captors, who serve their masters. As a result, the slaver ants' chances of expanding their territory are decreased as their population declines quickly. These events end up saving other ants from a life of slavery, one baby ant at a time.